Bo, former President Obama's dog, just died of cancer. If your dog or cat gets cancer, is there something you can do? These are my top five natural remedies. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications. Then we click the link directly in the box below. I can send you a copy of my free book. It just seems like way too many of our dogs or cats are getting diagnosed with cancer. You know, my first dog, Hoochie, had him in practice. Here he is here, there's a great shepherd cross. You think a breed who's not gonna show up with cancer. He died at the age of eight of hemangiosarcoma. My last dog, Lewis, he's this black lab cross, awesome dog. He developed mouth cancer at 13 and died of that. Murray, Tula, they're both pretty healthy now, but, and I'm just hoping, knock on wood, they're not gonna develop cancer. But if they were, like these are the top five remedies I'd be considering using. Number one is this guy, CBD and THC. A CBD is the non-psychoactive portion from the cannabis plant. THC, it's the psychoactive portion, but both of them have anti-cancer properties. The cannabinoids, they can bind to some of the cancer cells, allowing the immune system to recognize it. They may have specific anti-cancer properties in terms of inducing cell apoptosis, that's cell death, which is what you want uh, as an anti-cancer drug, as well too, being able to decrease the likelihood of the cancer to spread, you know, making it more difficult for the cancer cells to grow new blood vessels. We're looking at standard dog and cat doses of three milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight, twice daily and that's based on the CBD concentration. If you're using my supplement, it is one drop per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Tula is 20 pounds, she's gonna get two drops. She likes it. In my experience, it is also better to have a portion of it as THC. Ideally, you're dealing with a four to one tincture, so four parts CBD, one part THC. And with my last dog, Lewis, when he had mouth cancer, Unfortunately, it was just so advanced by the time it was diagnosed. Um, I couldn't have like some specific anti-cancer properties, but it provided him some great pain relief. Number two, it's an old dog and cat and horse dewormer, Panicure. Really, it's hard to believe a dog dewormer for cancer. Uh, I did a video on this a few years ago. You know, a man by the name of Joe Tippins, he had like incurable metastatic cancer who has gone through an array of different treatments, was now on experimental therapy. A friend who was a vet mentioned, like, why don't you try this dog dewormer? There's some studies saying it may be beneficial for cancer. He tried it, his panicure, and like three months later, he's cancer-free. A number of different pet parents have tried this similar dewormer, and in some cases have seen it to be beneficial for cancer. It turns out this old dewormer, it works by destabilizing uh, the cell membranes of certain cancer cells, ultimately resulting in cancer cell death. It may be helpful for your dog or cat. It's a very inexpensive safety warmer. My little dog tool here, if she were to have cancer, maybe like one of the first things I would try. We're looking at standard doses of 50 milligrams per kilo once a day for three days. So it's three days on, four days off. And you do that regimen for a month and then you'd get a good sense whether or not it was being beneficial for your dog, for your cat. Number three, it's the sleep hormone, melatonin. There are a huge number of studies on the clear benefits of this guy, melatonin, the sleep hormone, on an array of different cancers. You know, for instance, with breast cancer, with stomach cancer, with pancreatic cancer. And personally, with my last dog, Lewis, even with mouth cancer, squamous cell carcinoma, which I, I didn't realize at the time. Melatonin is an antioxidant. It's got an array of other different properties in terms of binding to specific melatonin receptors, in terms of influencing uh, cell death, which is what you want, apoptosis, when you have cancer cells, making it more difficult for the cancer cells to spread. It's safe, it's inexpensive, a bunch of great potential benefits. I don't know why I hadn't heard of it, I don't know, but Fortune for you guys, you're now aware of it. 
kind of typical melatonin doses, about two milligrams for 20 pounds of body weight daily. It's a pretty standard amount. The famed yellow flowered weed that grows in your garden, dandelion. It's actually this part of the dandelion, the dandelion root, which has the wonderful anti-cancer properties. Dandelion root has been extensively studied, in particular at the University of Windsor here in Canada, and they found an array of different specific anti-cancer compounds that are concentrated in this in dandelion root. I mean, they've seen some great results treating people that have like serious end-stage blood cancers, no longer responsive to chemotherapy. Is it gonna cure every type of cancer? No, it's not. But is it a great adjunct, you know, especially if you're looking at a dog a cat, or a cat that has this untreatable type of cancer? I mean, you bet it is. I have a specific video on how to make your own dandelion root tea tincture at home. And I'll link to that video in the description box. But in summary, it's you're getting dried dandelion root, other stuff you get out of your backyard, which I did. You pick up from a natural health store. You're grinding it moderately fine in a coffee grinder. Then you're taking one teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight of dog or cat. You're gonna simmer that in a pot with about one cup of water. And you're gonna simmer that for 15 to 20 minutes. So it gets nice and concentrated. And that's the amount you'd be giving to a 10 pound dog or cat throughout the day. You'd expect to see a result that's gonna be effective in your dog or cat in about a two week period. This is a new one. I haven't talked about it as a natural remedy for cancer. Olive leaf extract. The olive leaf extract, it's from the leaves of the olive tree. We know about olives, probably have eaten them on your pizza. Turns out that leaf can be, has an array of different wonderful medicinal properties. One in particular is being used as a natural remedy for cancer. It's a potent antioxidant. It's got this very strong flavonoid in it that has been shown to one, induce cell apoptosis, that's cell death in cancer cells, to make it more difficult for the cancer cells then to spread or metastasize. It's been extensively studied as well. I'm gonna link to some of those studies in the description box. When we're looking at doses, it's fairly standard, but 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight twice daily. These are 500 milligram capsules, two of those 20 pounds. I'd be inclined then just to give her one capsule a day instead of breaking up twice a day. So there is five new remedies to consider. I mean, hopefully your dog or cat doesn't get cancer. And if they do, obviously you're gonna see your veterinarian, you're gonna get a confirmatory diagnosis. When you're exploring some of the treatment options, you know, be really open to some of these uh, natural remedies. I mean, I, no question. My dog, my cat gets cancer. I will be using some of those. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets and my new remedies for cancer in dogs and cats. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I'll send you a copy of my free book.